Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning to everybody on live stream as well. Are you alive today? Yes, we've got breath in our lungs, so let's stand. We're going to worship the Creator, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, today. Oh, 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 oh,
Good morning, church. Um, good morning to everyone uh, on uh, joining us on live stream as well. Isn't it a blessing just to be in church this morning? Amen. Yes, praise God. Um, if we've not met before or I haven't given you a hug, um, I'm Andrew. I'm part of the senior uh, team here at Renewal. And, um, you know, we're here to just lift up the name of Jesus. So, yes, amen. And if I haven't given you a hook, it's just because I'm from Liverpool, okay? I don't do that kind of thing, you know, in different ways. Andrew, tell us a little bit about how people can be connected with us here at Renewal. Yeah, so um, you can follow us on all our social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that. Uh, and if you want to catch up on uh, previous messages, uh, if you go to Renewal CC um, forward slash streaming, uh, you can catch up on all our previous messages. Um, also, we have uh, a baby room for anyone that has any children under the age of two, which is in the Amiga room, which is just off uh, reception. If you're not sure, please see one of our welcome team in their red t-shirts or jumpers and they will point you in the right direction. And Gong Chi, Happy New Year for all of those from our Chinese community as well, oh yes. Uh, to all of those who are celebrating. Today we are taking the second part of part of the Ephesians teaching on the spiritual battle. Like it or not, you are in a fight. You know, you can't avoid it. And so uh, Justin, one of our pastors, he's going to be taking on the second part of the teaching uh, from Ephesians chapter 6. So uh, get your Bibles ready, your notes, um, your phones. I'm sure there's going to be something that God is going to speak to you through the teaching today. Um, also, if you've noticed uh, out in the foyer, uh, we have a new community project that we've recently set up called... Um, um, Baby Basics, um, and if you want to know more, please uh, turn to the screen, it was a short video. Hello, my name is Amy, and I'm Emily, and we are here in uh, our Baby Basics warehouse space, um, and we're just putting together a Baby Basics parcel for a mum who's been referred, and for those of you there thinking, Amy, what is Baby Basics? Well, we've partnered with Baby Basics UK, um, who are a national organisation who have local plants to connect with different organisations who can refer mums in need uh, to provide for uh, the children who otherwise wouldn't have a safe place to see. So um, talk us through what we're packing up here. Yeah, so a lot of people know here at Renewal we love to show them in action. Uh, and one way that we're going to be doing this is through providing Moses basket starter packs for new mums who for any reason can't afford things themselves. Um, so this referral that we've received is for a mum who is affected by the cost of living crisis um, and she can't provide the essentials for her baby that's due in March. Um, so we've got everything in here that she'll need for the first three months um, for her and her baby. Amazing. And so we've had some brilliant donations so far. So thank you to everybody who's already donated, which means that we can put these together um, initially. But um, talk us through how can people give towards um, Baby Basics? Yeah, so we've got a given point in our foyer, um, which people have already started to give to, so thank you. Um, if you head to renewalcc.com forward slash baby basics, you'll see all the different items that we can take. Um, or if you want to give financially, you can go to renewalcc.com forward slash give. And um, if you give into the community pot, that will come to us and we can then allocate it to this. Amazing. So like Em's already said, thank you so much to everybody who has already given. We do love to show love in action, bridging the gap between the church and the community. So please be generous in your giving and God bless and bye for now. You may remember just before Christmas, before we launched Baby Basics, um, we told the church about our first client who was uh, a 13-year-old mother. Um, we're pleased to say that that mother has now had a safe delivery of the baby. But here's how God is at work. Last week, one of Renewal's partners came to tell us that they themselves have been assigned to that mum and baby as the family support worker. You see, God is in all of the details. We believe this is a vision to be able to reach out into the community and just look not only how God provides, but God has known all of this situation. And now all of the follow-up care is going to be headed up by one of Renewal's partners. How amazing is that? That's absolutely incredible that that would be just the case. And we believe that part of that comes through the power of prayer. 
And I hope if you were back in January, you were involved in our prayer encounter, 40 continuous hours of prayer. Um, in that period of time, uh, Andrew, you embarked on something with a group of people from within a renewal. The ministry model um, and enables groups to just run with a couple of things that they feel God is doing. And uh, how did your prayer encounter go? Uh, yeah, it was it was incredible um, encounter. And and over that period of time, um, for a few years now. Um, with uh, my brother and my sister-in-law, we started doing the Daniel fast. Um, so I've been doing it about four or five years now, um, and we've. So just... a Daniel fast is from the Book of Daniel in the Old Testament part of the Bible, a 21-day period where it felt for Daniel it was a time of testing but he would only eat fruit and vegetables and water in that time is that what you did that's correct yes yeah. so um, yes yeah. so for 21 days no sugar no caffeine no meat uh, no chocolate uh, yeah it's difficult but um, I think we all know that fasting and prayer is so important um, and like I say we've seen uh, there's been 12 of us this season that I've done um, the 21 days together and we've just seen God move throughout the whole group uh, the testimonies that have been coming through has been incredible um, and yes it's tough um, but it's to see what God can do in those 24 days is just incredible so I encourage you all um, to to take part of it whether it's in your your group or your family whatever that may be and like I say if you want to know more about the Daniel Fast grab myself or anyone else and we'll, and we'll, we'll happily tell you a little bit more it's fantastic, isn't it? It just seeing the body minister to each other, and that's what we really feel we're a part of at the moment. And we know that this week will lead towards Valentine's, and that becomes um, a good time for some and a difficult time for others. And uh, you know, and the over commercial. I mean, it's not as commercialised as Pancake Day because eggs and flour are everywhere. You know, wherever you go in a, sh a supermarket. Um, but for renewal. We want you to know that God loves you. And so through our social media this week, we're going to send out the Ephesians prayers all about love so you can ensure that you get the true Christian vision of love. And one of the Psalms, Psalm 18, starts off with David saying, I love you, Lord. And the way he uses love there is, I've got such a deep bond with you that I am going places and we want the same for you that you would have such a deep bond whether it's through prayer and fasting or whether it's our time of worship so we're going to ask everyone to stand we're going to go back into worship but I wonder if you just tell God that you love him and that you want a deep bond with God right now and say to God I'm going places in you I've got a bond that is deeper than any other so Lord we pray your love would flow through this place in the mighty power of the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship together.
Oh uh-huh. 
arms high and unabandoned in all of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. And I with you um, today is obviously my first time hosting and um, and Johnny floated the idea a few months back about doing it and um, and I've been fighting against it um, for quite a while now I've been telling individuals do not get me up on that stage I do not want to speak um, it's you know it's, it's very much out of my comfort zone but um, Johnny asked me again this Monday and um, and what we've just been singing I've almost just had to surrender it and go God, this is for you. This is not for me or for anyone else in this room. It's for you, Lord. Um, and just let go. Um, and, you know, it has been good. Don't, I, I might have to go to the toilet and change something in a minute. Um, but, um, but, you know, all glory to God. So, um, and thank you for the opportunity. And like I say, it's all for the Lord. So, yes. Um, today's reading is uh, Ephesians 6, uh, 10 to 17, so I'll give everyone sort of 30 seconds to find that in their Bibles or their phones or... So it says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against almighty powers in the dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly place. Therefore, Put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth 
and the body armor of God's righteousness for the shoes put on the peace that comes from God news so that you will be fully prepared in addition to all these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is in the word of God can we welcome Justin up as he brings the word thank you gladiators ready oh man i love the gladiators i mean it's not quite the same without the scots accent is it but anyway uh, if you were in the uk in the 90s uh the gladiators started and the best thing so far to happen in 2024 apart from the prayer encounter is that gladiators has returned to our screens and uh, now my children are running the wrong way up every single escalator uh, imagining they're on the travelator uh, if you've not seen gladiators it's absolutely brilliant it's this kind of like 20 or so guys and girls who are absolute mountains of humans like, they are as big as a house, as solid as a rock, as fast as a cheetah. And Darren from Bolton, who likes a bit of five-a-side on a Sunday, is going to take them on for his nan who's watching in the audience. Nan, this is all for you. And, you know, 30 seconds in jewel, holding those big pugil sticks, trying to bash, you know, giant off the platform. They normally last about four seconds, whilst the rest of us sit at home eating chocolate pretzels, going, I could have him, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. But I'll just have another bag of crisps first. That'll be fun. Gladiators absolutely love it. It's just brilliant fun. Just seeing the battle, seeing people kind of plucky with courage, taking on things that they stand absolutely zero chance of winning. And every now and again, one of them is quick enough, fast enough, lucky enough to beat a gladiator. Ah, so there you go. It's just a flashback to my childhood. Um, we're thinking about spiritual warfare. We're thinking about the battle that as believers that we are engaged with um, and it's interesting to kind of think about okay what is the nature of that battle what does this look like like am I now up on top of a platform trying to bash the enemy off am I kind of swinging from ropes just trying to escape somebody getting to me why does life feel like the travelator like was well, just as soon as I get near the top I kind of stumble and get spat back down to the bottom again why is the nature when we talk about spiritual warfare what is it that we are talking about. Well, what is the armour of God? So, so Paul talks to us in this passage when he says you're engaged in a battle, you're engaged in spiritual warfare, and he talks about the armour of God. But the question I want to ask today is whose armour is it anyway? Whose armour is it anyway and by kind of the end of our time this morning I want to encourage us to not be standing in fear or frustration or the flesh but to be standing in faith to be standing in faith so last week Johnny gave us uh, kind of a triplet three things to think about when it comes to the battle often um, it's ourselves that we're wrestling with I would much rather sit on the couch and eat junk than get out and exercise. Often my flesh would much rather do things it knows isn't great for me than do the things that are good for me. So often it's me that trips myself up. But then we are in a fallen world that doesn't matter, try as hard as you might be, as good as you might, things just are not always going to go your way. It will be icy on the one morning you're running late. It's just, it's just the way the world goes, right? Just You feel like you're constantly running up this travelator because this world is broken and fallen and we see the consequences of that play out in disastrous ways. But then thirdly, we do have a fallen enemy. 
Now, the Bible talks much more about crucifying our own nature and being renewed in our inner being than it does about fighting with the enemy. However, Paul does say there is an enemy and at times you will find yourself not wrestling with yourself or just wrestling with the way the world is. You will come up against spiritual opposition and in that day, you need to do everything to stand. So we're going to have a look at the armour of God in Ephesians 6, but uh, I want us just to pull out this verse first. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So two triplets for us this week. Fear, frustration and the flesh. But I want us also to think about the shield, about standing And about schemes. So let's start with let's start with schemes. Ben, would you come and join me uh, on the uh, on the platform? Come on, Ben. Ah, gladiator, ready. Ah, Ben. Ben's going to help me out with a few illustrations today. Ah, come on, Ben. Ben, come and take a come and take a stand over over here. There you go. Ben, what do you do? What's your, what's your occupation? What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a lecturer. A lecturer. What do you lecture in? Uh, public services and sport and exercise. Public services and sports and exercises. Well, you're, you're a pretty fit guy, aren't you? I try. You try. You try. You recently did the fan dance. I did, yeah. What's the fan dance? Like? <laughs> it's a big dance up a mountain. It's a 15-mile it's a run up uh, Brecon Beacons. So... <clears throat> You hold this, hold this nice ruby for me there, Ben. Thanks for that. So, um, yeah, she should have picked a different volunteer. So, um, Ben has this amazingly incredible, precious ruby. It's worth millions and millions of pounds, the largest ruby ever to be found under my daughter's bed. And, um, and I want it. And I want it. So I'm going to try and get it from him. Now, I've got a couple of options. If, if I have a legal right to that ruby, if I can demonstrate and prove that in law it's mine, I could walk up to him and say, give that to me or hear from my lawyers. Or if you refuse, I'll call the police. I have a legal right and I have a weight of the law behind me to force you to hand that over. However, Ben's not convinced by my legal intimidation because he knows I have absolutely no legal right to take it from him. So, if I've no recourse to the law, then <clears throat> I could use my strength. I could walk up to him, I could punch him in the face, I could knee him in the abdomen, I could sweep his legs, get him on the floor, and then snatch it from him. Are you ready? Yeah. Contender, ready. <laughs> Gladiator, ready. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, no, we're going <laughs> to... So if I don't have the strength to take it from him, if I don't fancy my chances, then I've got one other option left. I could try and scheme it out of him. I could try and trick him. I could try and convince him, oh, just let me have a little look at it. You can have it back when I'm done. Or, oh, look, there's a bird. You know. He's not moving, is he? So when Paul says, stand against the schemes of the devil... He chooses that word deliberately. And that word in his original Greek, kind of two words squashed together, has this idea of deceit and cunning and trickery. Why? Because the devil has no legal right to take anything from you, nor does he have the strength, if you're in Christ, to overpower you. So he's only got one option. That's the scheme. So when we suddenly talk about this spiritual warfare, this spiritual battle that we are in, actually it's on us not to give it up because he can't take it. If I had the strength to have taken that from Ben, I would have done it by now, but I don't. That sounded better in my head. (laughs) The enemy has to scheme against you because he does not have the strength to overpower you. The enemy has to scheme against you because he has no right to get what God has given to you from you. That's why when he comes in the garden to Adam and Eve, like, he's trying to trick them. Because he doesn't have the strength to overpower them. 
So that's why Paul says, listen, you've just got to stand. Don't fall for the tricks. Don't give in to the schemes. Just stand. How you doing, Ben? How you feeling standing? Strong. Good. He's <laughs> feeling strong. You ever stood in a theme park queue? It's boring, isn't it? You're like standing there for two hours for 45 seconds of excitement. You know, spiritual warfare is less exciting than we might like to believe. We're not dressing ourselves up, ready to go out and kick butt. No, just stand where you are. Don't give up your position. Because if you stay in that queue and you don't get bored and you don't wander off, eventually you'll get what is yours. That wristband that's been put around your wrist will guarantee you a seat on that ride. And the only thing that will stop you getting there is if you give up your position and wander off. Paul says, listen, you've got to. It's schemes that the enemy is going to come against you with, but you have got to stand your ground. And as long as you stand, you are standing in the victory. But don't be tricked into moving. Round of applause for Ben. Thank you, Ben. There we go. See, you got it back from him. Yeah, a round of applause. Give it a trick. There we go. There we go. So we've got schemes. We've got standing. And then Paul says, put on the full armour of God in order to do this. And we're going to think about the full armour, but I specifically want us at the end to pull out the shield. So whose armour is it anyway? Whose armour is it anyway? When Paul's writing Ephesians, he's, he's in a Roman prison. He's incarcerated at the time. Paul has had a few brushes with the Roman Empire. Not only has he presumably lived up, grown up, lived and breathed within their occupation, he, he causes a bit of a riot in Jerusalem and the Roman, Roman soldiers have to step in and save him from the riot, but also then arrest him and put him into custody. It may well be that there's a Roman soldier standing outside of his cell and so he can see all of this armour in front of him. When he talks about the shield, he deliberately uses a word that denotes a long oblong shield that the Romans would have used. Like a big door almost to kind of hide themselves and lock in behind. He deliberately uses that word rather than a word that would denote maybe a small round shield that perhaps some of the Greek forces would have used. So so he's definitely leaning into some of the things that are around him, especially when it comes to the shield. But I also think he's leaning into something else. Because although Paul lives within the Roman Empire, his whole worldview, his whole understanding, his whole outlook on life is not shaped by Rome. It's shaped by the Jewish scriptures. And I think when he says the armour of God, he literally means the armour of God. Of God. Come with me to Isaiah 59, verses 15 to 20. It says, The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm, and his justice sustained him. He put on righteousness as his body armor. And placed this helmet of salvation on his head. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. He will repay his enemies for their evil deeds. His fury will fall on his foes. He will pay them back even to the ends of the earth. In the west people will respect the name of the Lord. In the east they will glorify him. For he will come like a raging flood tide driven by the breath of the Lord. The Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins. So hopefully there's lots of connections kind of popping off for you in this passage. Isaiah kind of has this vision of God looking down from heaven, seeing the chaos that the enemy has wrecked on his creation, on humanity, on the world. And he looks at it and he's furious, but he marvels like nobody's trying to sort this out. Nobody is stepping in. No one is standing up for righteousness. And so he himself puts on this helmet of salvation. 
He himself puts on this breastplate of righteousness. He wraps himself in a cloak, like a cloak of vengeance. You get this sense like God's like this mama bear. Someone's messed with her cubs and now she's coming out swinging for them. Like you get the kind of the fury and the passion of God going, if nobody will rescue my creation, then I will step in like a warrior king and do it myself. See, when Isaiah paints us pictures of the Messiah, the one who is to come, the one who will save Israel and then the nations, we get this picture of a suffering servant. We get this picture of a lamb led to the slaughter who doesn't even say a word. We get this picture of someone so meek and insignificant that there's, there's no reason why we would look at him. We wouldn't even give him a second look. There's, there's nothing really about his humanity that would stand him out from the crowd. You get all of those in Isaiah, but you also get the picture of a warrior king who has robed himself for battle. And he's furious at the enemy and he's furious at sin and death and evil and suffering. And charges in to rescue his people. Isaiah says at the end of that passage, he will rescue, he will redeem, he will buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins. Imagine we're, we're caught in a house fire and we can't get ourselves out of it and the, the smoke is now filled up the room and we can't see and we can feel the heat of the flames coming towards us and we're completely trapped and then suddenly through the chaos and the terror we see this firefighter emerge and come to us and they take off their helmet and put it on us and they take off their jacket and they wrap it around us and then they scoop us up and they carry us back out through the flames and as they're carrying us out through the flames they themselves are getting burnt but we are being carried safe and then we get outside and we are oh, brilliant, thanks for that. Now I've got the protection. I'm just going to run back into the flames. Like when Paul is saying stand, he's saying, do you not understand whose armour you are standing in? He has rescued you from sin and clothed you with his helmet and his breastplate of righteousness. Don't run back to the things you have been saved from. Stand in the victory you have been given. You see, we talked about fear, frustration, and the flesh. One of the devil's strategies is to get you back into the flesh. Those things that you've been set free from, yeah, but you've not been really. Those things that you thought you'd grown past, yeah, but let me just entice you back. Because you've had a hard week, haven't you? You've had a hard week. It's okay. It's all right that you reacted like that. It's okay to treat somebody badly because they just don't understand the pressure you're on. The pressure that you're under, that's okay. Do you know what? You do deserve two glasses. It's been stressful this week, hasn't it? Jesus is saying, you're wearing the armour that I wore when I rescued you from this. Don't run back into the flesh. Stand in the victory that you have. Do we not understand we are standing in the victory in the armour that our warrior king wore when he rescued us. And then he took it off his head and he placed it onto us. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. The good news of the peace and salvation. The news that the God of Israel reigns. The good news of peace and salvation. Beautiful feet. I don't really think feet are beautiful. It's a bit gross, really, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry if, if, you're, if you've got a foot fetish, if that's your thing. That's nice for you, but um, I would never describe feet as beautiful, really. But Paul tells us, put on the gospel of peace on your feet. And Isaiah tells us how beautiful it is when you see these feet coming over the mountains with peaceful news, with good news. So, so the, the watchmen would be looking out over the city. What's coming towards us? Are there armies coming towards us? 
Are there people coming towards us trying to harm us? Is one of our own coming towards us, but they're a messenger? But, but how are they traveling? Have they got anxious feet? You know, we've been uh, working with some of our young adult speakers. We're, we're going to be handing the evening gathering over to them to lead and run later on in the year. And when we coach them as new speakers, we, we always kind of encourage them to not do what I'm doing now, which is just let your feet wander around. <laughs> Because when you see a speaker doing this, they might be really calm up here, but the feet are telling you they've got no idea what's coming next and they're completely anxious. And so it just comes out in your feet and you just find yourself pacing around because I absolutely know where this message is going and I'm perfectly confident in what's happening, but actually inside I'm like, get me out of here. But we pace, don't we, when we're anxious? And yet Isaiah says, when feet are moving in peace, it's beautiful. You know, the enemy will try and get you to move out of frustration or fear. And you know full well, because you've moved out of frustration in the past and it didn't go well, did it? I've just got to do something. This is all right. I've got to step out. This is, I don't know what's... Ah, ah, ah. And you put your foot in it. One of our challenges as we grow as Christians is to only move when we've got the peace of God about what we're doing is to learn just to stand and go, what's going on around me? Okay, what the circumstances look like on my feet is the peace that comes with the good news of Jesus. So I'm going to move, but when I move, I'm moving in peace. I'm not going to move in fear. I'm not going to move out of frustration because I just feel like oh, I've just got to do something now. I'm not going to step out in pride because this is mine to grab. Going to go, no, when the peace of God leads me forward, then I'll move. It's one of my kind of tips and tricks for pastoral care is when you get that kind of crisis phone call that comes into the front desk and you know it comes to you, Justin, how this is going on and this is happening. And we're like, brilliant, I'm just gonna put the kettle on. <laughs> I'll just put the kettle on, let's make a cup of tea, let's have a little sit down, let's maybe do some emails. It's not because I'm uncaring, but if you jump into the panic straight away. <laughs> Right, bad things generally happen. If you just hold, go, right, hang on a minute. Let's just give this a couple of minutes. Let's just let the adrenaline kind of do its thing. Let's just sink into the peace of God. And you start to find you've got a heck of a lot more wisdom than when you jump in with anxious feet. And Paul is saying, don't move your feet unless they have got peace on them. Don't move your feet unless you've got peace on them. In Isaiah 11, 1 to 5, you get this. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old roots, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. Again, I think this is what Paul is leading, leaning into. Say, hey, wrap yourself up with the truth. Everything gets held together by the truth. The belt of truth will keep you in the right position. If you're building something on deceit, if you're building something on lies, if you're not acting in honesty and integrity, then it's a pack of cards just waiting to fall, isn't it? But when you're standing in the truth, everything is held together. And again, it's the belt that our warrior king wore when he rescued us. And now he wraps it around you. He says, you're not going to fall apart. You're not going to crack under the pressure. You might lose a few nights sleep. Things might get tasty every now and again. But stand in the truth of what God has said and it will be held together. The enemy wants you to fear and you know, one of the best things you could do for yourself this week is to read through the book of Ephesians and write down everything you have in Christ Jesus. Because Paul spends the entire book 
putting you back where Jesus is. Don't you understand that you're seated in heavenly places? You're blessed with every spiritual blessing in him. You are his masterpiece in Christ Jesus. It's like when you understand the truth of that, when things are falling around you, the belt keeps your backside covered. It holds you together. When we understand the truth that we stand in, it holds us together. Isaiah 49, 1 to 2. Listen to me, all you in distant lands. Pay attention, you who are far away. The Lord called me before my birth. From within the womb, he called me by name. He made my words of judgment as sharp as a sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. I am like a sharp arrow in his quiver. Again, Isaiah is saying the words that come out of this warrior king, they're as sharp as a sword. And Paul says, pick up the words of Jesus. Your sharp sword Pick them up when you need to cut through the nonsense, when you need to cut through the difficulties that you're facing, when there doesn't appear to be a way in front of you, you need the word of God to slice through that. This is granddad used to have this massive machete, terrified her as a child. She would just wander around, slashing all the grass down so that they could create a path to walk forward. Paul is saying there's power in the word. So pick it up, pick your sword up and use it. The same very sword that defeated the enemy once before. So when the enemy does come at you and you go, it is written, he's like, oh yeah, I played this game once before. I recognise that helmet, I recognise that breastplate. I've seen those shoes before, that belt's holding everything together and that sword's already done me in once. The very same armour that your warrior king was wearing is now on you. Don't you understand where you are standing? Don't you understand what you are standing in? Don't be tricked into giving up your confidence. Don't be tricked into thinking you are nobody and you've got nothing to offer. Don't be tricked into thinking this is all over now and you can never come back from it. Don't be tricked into thinking that this illness is the one that's going to kill you. No, when God says your time is done, your time is done and nothing else. You have to stand in what God has already done. And then Paul says, in addition to all of this, Hold up the shield of faith. Now, here's my theory, and it is just a theory, and a thousand theologians would disagree with me, but that's okay because I often disagree with myself. I think when Paul says, in addition to this, add the shield, I think Paul knows what he's doing. Because I think Paul is going, I'm going to add to what's in Isaiah. Because when you're the Apostle Paul, you can do that, right? You're allowed to do that. He's like, our warrior king who was out on the offensive, who came like a raging flood to rescue us from the enemy, has now robed us in his armour. But he was on the offence, and now we're on the defence, because we've already got the victory. So what else do you need? We well, need a shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows that the devil will throw at you. Every battle starts in the air. Throughout history, every single battle starts in the air. When David takes on Goliath with the stones, he's not making it up as he goes along. He's understanding that in a battle of strength, I'm going to lose. But actually, when we start a fight, when our armies line up to face each other, as we start marching towards each other, the fast ones run out ahead throw a load of rocks and stones to try and take out the front rows of the enemy and then leg it back behind the front line. That's, that's what happened in ancient warfare. They would run out ahead and pelt the enemy with stones and rocks and projectiles. Be it the big catapults that they would make to fling uh, rocks or boulders or flames at the city walls to try and throw something through the air that would disrupt the opposition. Be it the English archers that we were famous for that were just volley after volley of arrows that would fly through the air. Through to now, somebody sat in a porter cabin in a desert in Nevada somewhere, 
flying a drone halfway around the world, ready to just go. Every battle starts in the air. Because if you put boots on the ground, somebody's going to get hurt. But if you can win the battle from the air, you're nice and protected. Well, here's the thing. The enemy did put boots on the ground and he got a kicking. So now all he's left to do is to try and throw things through the air at you. Because actually he can't come up and take you one on one because you're dead. You were crucified with Christ. But who are you fighting with? It's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. And so the enemy will try and fire things through the air at you to get you to move. Paul says, stand, hold up your shield. Don't allow the arrows of the enemy to come in and to make you afraid, to make you frustrated, to lure you back into the flesh, but just keep your shield up. And whilst that shield is up, nothing can touch you. When we had our uh, prayer encounter, I did one of the the night shifts and kind of wandering in, I was like, how am I going to stay awake and how am I going to fill the time? I don't do well with, with, with not much sleep. Uh, I, and I sat down in the moment, literally in the first minute of my shift, the moment my bottom hit the chair to pray, I just felt the Spirit say to me, you're still frustrated about that? I was like, oh, for goodness sake. Give me an hour to like sell in nicely, right? Let me warm up to this. It's like, you've let the enemy in. Because you stop viewing this situation in faith and you let your frustration rise up. still standing in the place of victory but don't blink in our fur when you've got an infection going on because you've got something jabbed in you that shouldn't be in there you've got to repent of that you've got to receive healing for that and then you've got to bring your shield of faith back up to go if that situation played out like that then I've got to stand in faith that God will work all things for good and actually this is for my good in the long run it's not for my frustration It's not for my failure. It's not to make me afraid. God is doing a good thing. But in all circumstances, in addition to everything Jesus has done for you, you've just got to do one more thing now. Keep your shield of faith up. If you do that, the enemy cannot get near you. And the army of God just keeps stepping forward in peace. Stepping forward in peace. Surrounding one another protecting one another. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move in the armor that our warrior king wore when he rescued us. Holding up the shield of faith to stop the enemy's last option. Not falling for his tricks. Standing in the victory. He has won for us. I wonder, I guess, kind of as I've been speaking, if there's situations in your life and it, and it has been fear, frustration or the flesh. You know, as I've been talking, you've, you've stepped into something that isn't the peace of God. You've stepped out of the victory that God has given you or you're facing something right now and like your shield's up but you're like, my arms are hurting. <laughs> like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. When those rocks hit the front of that shield, it sounds horrible. The arrows outside are on fire and it's starting to feel a bit hot now. And and any moment now, I feel like I'm going to drop. I'm going to leave myself open and vulnerable. I wonder if that's you. I would love all of us to pray together. But I would love us especially to pray for, for you guys right now. So whether it's fear, frustration, or the flesh, you know right now that's your battle to not step into any of those would you just stand with me so I can pray bless you thank you you know Ben messaged me a word earlier on this week just about that shield that actually when we lock in together we can advance forward Actually, when we surround each other, nothing can harm us. 
also everybody else in the room, like I want you to start to pray for the people around you. This is not their battle. This is not their issue. This is ours. We are the people of God together. We are the army of God. We are the body of Christ. And if my shield of faith is dropping, then it's on you to get yours around me. So come on, let's pray together. Just in your own words, in your own time. Those of you who aren't standing, pray for your brothers and sisters around you. Speak life over them. Speak encouragement over them. Lord, we pray against fear. Lord, your perfect love casts out all fear. But Lord, the rocks of circumstance, the difficulties of life, maybe even the arrows of the enemy are pelting at our door. But Lord, we know they cannot get through the shield of faith. But God, would you strengthen our arms right now to stand in faith to not be afraid, to not move out of a fear, but for your peace to come in right now. Lord, I pray underneath that shield wall, God, would we have a sense of camaraderie and fun, a sense of joy and life, knowing that it doesn't matter what's raging outside of this wall, inside of this wall, the Lord reigns. Inside of this wall, the King of Kings is with us. Inside of this wall, we're wearing the army that our warrior king wore when he rescued us. And nothing and no one can take that from us. Lord, I pray for those who are frustrated. Oh God, I know that one. Situations where you're like, God, just fix it. God, just do something. Why are you allowing those people to do that? Why is this not working out the way it should do? Why I've put everything in yet I've not got the end result. God, help us in our frustration to recognise that that is a scheme of the enemy, to tell us we have less, to tell us we need to do more, to tell us we're not good enough and we need to try harder. God, help us to be still and know that you are God. Lord, would you still our frustrations right now as the people of God may the peace of God rule in our hearts and in our minds. tell us this will be good for us and yet we know if you've rescued us from it you've already given us every good thing that we need so God would you help us right now Lord to walk in the spirit and not be drawn back into the flesh but to stand firm as the army of God to stand firm in the victory
see your abundance flowing from us to those around us. We will see the gospel go from one to many. We will see the name of Jesus lifted high and adored and reverenced and honoured in this nation and beyond. What are the flesh? What are the schemes that would drag you back? And hold up that shield of faith together to stand firm. Bless you. Johnny, come and rock us up. One of the great strengths, I think, here at Renewal is this balance we have of word and spirit. This moment is not your apex moment as a Christian in a Sunday morning. The rest of your week is where God's Spirit wants to work. This is only half time. God equips you, enables you, and then sends you back out on mission. So be encouraged. This is for your strengthening. Just it's been a fantastic word, and I'm sure many in the room have been encouraged. We are convinced completely that the uh, Bible tells us that the Son of God, Jesus, came to destroy the works of the enemy. He has done that through the victory on the cross. And we would encourage you, if today something of that has spoken to you and you haven't yet got a relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then check out next steps. Either come to our connection points either side of this stage or go to our website forward slash next steps. We would love to be partnering with you on the journey for you to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Saviour. It is the way for everything you've heard through Justin. That's the victory and that's what is defeated. And a relationship with Jesus would get you on the way with that. We would love to be able to help you with that. And if you would like further prayer, we know within our gatherings or even online, we know that we can do so much, but we would still love to be able to stand with you and our teams are either side again to be able to pray with you. Um, and please, if you've received prayer, um, send in your testimonies. We've received a couple of testimonies this week of people who have been freed from aches and pains mainly um, through praying for those who were sick last week. There's been five or six different accounts. We really believe that God is on the move. We want to find a way to be able to collate those testimonies so it raises our faith. But it's not just in the one moment. Um, God is doing something amongst us. So keep sharing and encouraging. We believe God um, is trying to take us together on a, as a family on a great journey. I really want to encourage you finally towards our giving. I believe, and we teach here, that our tithes are God first. That the money that we have got, that God uses to provide for our lives and meet our needs, the first portion of that is God's. And we return back to God something He has given to us. We believe that that will open up a spiritual blessing for you by doing just that. So check out renewalcc.com forward slash give and try and make tithe in your practice. I think so much more of your life will flow into right order because God is first and God is most. So I really encourage you just to think about that and think towards your giving. Don't forget Baby Basics. It's amazing, isn't it, that we've just launched such a great outreach to our community and already God has started to be at work. Um, grab coffee and tea. Uh, come and meet one of the team. Come and talk with them one another. Get encouraged. We're back here at 6 p.m. for our evening gathering if you'd like to join us uh, once again uh, today. Other than that, I might see you for deeper on Tuesday nights or with your groups and teams. Have a fantastic week. And again, to all of our Chinese community, Happy New Year to you. God bless you this week and have a great week ahead.